Hello! Okay, I've not done a video for ooh, a few days now. I've been um, I've just been super busy. Got a big project um, that I'm trying to get live. Um, so I have been doing testing now, and I've been playing with Prompt Waves, um, which V4 does have, and I wanted to see um, exactly what they did, how they worked, and um, and bring it all to you and, and, and tell you guys, because so that's what this channel's about. So without further ado, I set up an experiment. I'll, I'll talk you through it now. Um, I mean, you know my view on using artists. I'm, uh, you know, I don't tend to use artists, but artists are great for testing stuff because they have very specific details. So I picked two artists that were. Basically, as diametrically opposite as I could find, yeah. Uh, Pedabalke or Pedabalk, don't know his name's pronounced. Norwegian painter, basically painted some, you know, fairly stark landscape stuff. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Um, and Matt Ryden, <laughs> yeah. Um, because I mean, I think you probably agree these are about as different as you can get, yeah. Um, and I wanted to see. How the prompt waiting worked, yeah. So, one of the first things I discovered was that um, the maximum number you can have is like ten thousand. Because if I because I just kept going up in number until it said, "Oh, error! You can't have more than ten thousand. So, ten thousand is the biggest weight you can put on a on a, a bu -bu -bu bum on a prompt, yeah. And the other thing I did was I've not put anything other than the artist names and the weights in here, yeah. I've used a consistent seed throughout. This is just some bug that I keep getting where it just keeps increasing the number of V4s and Q2s I've got. Um, so with this, it should basically give both the equal weight, yeah. So I've not told it to a landscape, not done it to a portrait, yeah. Um, and I've got like Seascapes, we look at Pedabal, he does what seascapes, he has bolts and whatnot. We look at Matt Ryden. Um, not so much seascapes, not so much bolts. Um, so I would say that it's kind of leaning colour wise and 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 aesthetics towards um Matt Ryden. And then I, I played with some of the other numbers, so I thought, okay, well what happens if the weight is if I give it 10,000, 10,000, is there, obviously there is a default mid journey for um, algorithm. So if I, if I basically say, right, just, I just want it all my ride and all, all pedopal, is there a difference? So let's have a look if there is any real perceivable difference. Yeah. So this is the 10,000, 10,000, and this is the one, one. Yeah. And as you can see, there's no real perceivable difference between the two, yeah? So putting this number any higher doesn't seem to detune mid-journey, if you know what I mean. Um, so it's it's kind of, it's immaterial how high you go. All it's useful for is giving you that granularity to say, you know, you might say, I want this at 10,000, I want this at 9,000, 8,000, 7,500, whatever. Yeah, if you've got real, um, a real granular requirement to do something. Um, so then I started playing around. Uh, I said, okay, well, let's let's turn up Pedabalke. Okay? Uh, and let's turn down Mount Ryden's 5,000. Yeah, and as you can see, it's a lot more, um, it's a lot more like his stuff. Yeah, uh, got a lot less of the Mount Ryden influence. Yeah. And then I thought, okay, let's turn down Pedabalke and turn up Mark Ryden. Okay. Uh, and as you can see, um, it looks a lot more like, like Mark Ryden stuff. Now, the interesting thing to note as well is not only does it look more like Mark Ryden's, it's flipped from landscape to portrait. Now, I don't know what it is about this that tells it, that was telling it when it was equal weighted to do a landscape, yeah, because. You know, my writing stuff is kind of scenes and portraits. So whether there's like a default that is the landscape, um, but it's interesting. And you'll see as we get through further through the test, attached to an artist name, there's almost like a set of attributes. Yeah. If you imagine the artist as a container, and that container is the um, the colours, the art style, the aesthetics, the type of compositions they do. 
the you know the the genre etc um and when you start tuning that artist in or out it, it pulls all the elements in yeah and i know what you're thinking and, and i'll tell you at the end <laughs> i'll tell you at the end uh then what i did and i think from waiting to some extent is broken okay because i turned tuned out mount riding to zero yeah had about a th a ten thousand and I also get I got some odd results like none of these none of these are, are what I would expect from that prompt um, and then I tuned out pedobalky completely and that's pretty much what I would expect okay uh, so sorry I've not tuned him out completely because you can go below zero you can go down to minus ten thousand okay so then I turned down Mount Ryden to five thousand and I mean, you'd have you'd have to have a really good eye to see much difference between those two. That's a mistake. Hundred, it's really annoying. I had to keep doing hundred and one instead because it just kept putting an emoji in. Um, yeah. Um, so then I turned my riding down to a thousand. Let's just have a look at that compared to the five thousand. You you probably can't tell much of a difference there. Yeah, so there's no real perceivable difference there, yeah. So the granularity isn't isn't great. Uh, where are we? There we go. And then I went down to as you can see I had to do hundred and one. Um so again, yeah, there's no real perceivable difference there going to hundred and one. So the the granularity is, is is kind of minimal. And then I turned it right down to just one zero. And again, as you can see, the the weighting is pretty much the same. Then, this is really interesting. I, I, t I put my ride into 5,000. I put Pedder Balky down at minus 5,000, yeah? And what it did, not only did it take out all influence for Pedder Balky, but it took out, as far as I can see, anything that related to to what Pedder Balky does as an artist, which is a landscape, a scene, a composition, if you will, yeah? And it basically said, okay, well, I'm just going to do the characters. And, and it really got into, you know, these these plates. Um, I, I bet a lot you see a lot of this. My riding gets used quite a bit um, by, by artists. He's got this very unique look. Um, he's actually copied this from, from elsewhere, um, which is what artists do. Um, but, yeah, so we've got these odd plates, which are really cool, actually. Um, so yeah, so tuning tuning Pedabalkio not just took his influence out in terms of his art style, but it took the composition out. Yeah? Um, and then what did I do there? And then I started playing around, going, okay, well, I wonder if it understands if I tell it to do composition by style by. Can I start playing around and really trying to mess around with artists and and and, and do these do these odd tunings and. Um, same seed now i got i got something completely different from what i would have expected when i did ten thousand. so let's have a look up there let me close some of these i'm gonna get myself confused in a minute which isn't hard uh so there's the ten thousand. if i go what did i do there i've lost my face oh there we go uh if i go back to the ten thousand ten thousand and open that up i've got a completely different composition yeah which is really interesting, yeah. It's got little quirky elements, yeah. That I would kind of say, you know, are a bit about riding it, but as you can see, I've not put the weight in, yeah. But all the words that you use influence what comes out. So whether the fact that I've got composition and styling. It's kind of gone, oh, I'm going to put a bit more composition and style into the picture. So I thought I'd test it a bit more anyway. I thought, right, okay, I'll drop Pedabalki down to zero. I'll drop Matt riding on this side down to zero. So in effect, I'm saying the composition is 10,000 Matt riding, um, and my style is 10,000 Pedabalki. Yeah? Um, the numbers themselves add up. Um, so I should get something fairly different. Um, and I kind of... Where's uh, it gone? The, so that's the that's the one where I've done the first ten thousand test. I mean, 
The only one that's really unique is that one compared to it. So does it work? Is it worth playing with? Maybe. Don't know. Uh, then what did I do? Then I, I flipped it again. I said, okay, so let's strip Pedabalki out completely down. Let's strip Mount Riding out completely down on style. Yeah. Um, so then it should be just Pedabalki's style pretty much, which is that, if we just remind ourselves, you know, that fairly bleak um, Scandinavian look he had. Um, and, it, and the composition should just be really Mark Ryden. So I would expect the composition to be, you know, similar to what his has done. And it's not. Yeah. Um, we've got very similar to what we had in the last one. Yeah. Uh, so my, my, my inclination, I've done quite a bit of testing in various different things. I've done portraits with, um, I used Mark Ryden and, and um, somebody else to test with portraits. Um, doing aesthetics, colours, all that sort of stuff. My feeling is you cannot split out an artist's individual styles, even though they are a container, so to speak. Yeah. So when you put, you want an artist, um, you get a container of that artist. Yeah. Um, and again, I'll explain some other things that that you probably want to know at the end of here. Yeah. Um, again, just some more. Cute Mark Ryden plates. Then I stripped out Mark Ryden completely and just had Pedabalki here. And then it kind of took everything away other than like that stark landscape effect. Yeah. It was like, okay, well, what can I strip away? And I got these weird geomet geometric things. Yeah. It was like I'm taking away everything that's even related to Mark Ryden. Yeah. So it feels kind of broken a bit, that, but it's interesting. You know, it's to get some interesting effects. And then I played around with, like, landscape and portrait. So as you can see, I'm saying, okay, I basically want a landscape. I don't want anything portrait-like. Same seed again. And I got these these landscapes um, that are uh, Mark Ryden-esque because I've taken Pedabalki out completely. Yeah? Um, because I wanted to force it to do... A portrait, uh, sorry, a landscape, but just my riding, yeah. So, you, so you know, that's something that you, you could quite cleverly do, yeah, because nobody would say, "Oh, that's my riding," that because it doesn't look like his paintings at all. But it is, is everything else about him, yeah. It's taking his colours, it's taking his brush strokes, the way that he, you know, paints things, and it's done a, you know, nice landscape painting. And I did the exact opposite. Uh, landscape just to test Pedabalki. So that's what a Pedabalki landscape is coming out as. Um, yeah, so there you go. So, oh, and there we go. I've got a portrait. Oh, right, yeah. Then I tried to do this, is interesting. I tried to do a Pedabalki portrait. And, um, and the AI just went, I can't. I don't know what a portrait would look like. There's nothing in his compositions at all that I can pull out that is a portrait. Yeah. Really interesting. So, the conclusions that I can draw from this test, and you can draw them, you can go and do some tests of your own if you want, are that artists and words in general are containers. Yeah. Um, so, if you think of like an artist as all the different sections of that artist, then when you get when you do that artist, you will get what they do. So, like, there's. And I can't remember his name. Somebody else might be able to remember him. There's a, like a pop surrealist artist and like all his pictures involve people riding dinosaurs, yeah? If you use that artist's name, it's going to look at the pictures and it's going to want to draw people riding dinosaurs, yeah? If you use Mark Ryden, it's going to want to draw odd-looking people and butterflies and stuff like that and flowers and have really compact scenes, yeah? And if you... This is my experience, anyway. If you try and drag the picture too far away from the compositional elements that that artist does, that's when you start getting poorer results because the AI gets stuck and it has to start trying to do things that it doesn't kind of naturally see in the pictures that it's looking at, yeah? Um, and then you get these grainy, you get the more grainy results, yeah, the more blurred results, yeah? If you stick to the artist's compositional style, yeah, um, then you'll get better results. So, for example, if you're doing portraiture, 
go and have a look at artists that do really good portraiture, yeah, and you know you'll be able to reference their artwork better. If you if you're using artists, I don't advise it. There's um, conversations happening um, about around print on demand stores putting AI into basically spot artwork that's derived from other arts because there's obviously massive copyright issues that haven't resolved through the courts yet and that will potentially get backdated so companies are being really cagey about this understandably so so yeah so if you want to do landscapes and you want to refer to artists go and find artists that have done landscapes if you want to put dinosaurs in your pictures find some artists that put dinosaurs in their pictures yeah because if you try and get an artist to draw something or you get the AI to try and draw something that the artist naturally hasn't drawn, it'll refer back to like its master data set and it pulls it out of the container of that artist. That's my experience anyway, based on these tests and my feel for things, yeah. And it's the same with the words that you use as well, the, the prompt weights, yeah. Um there's there's attached baggage to any word that you use that it then goes and tries to cross reference and you know. Uh not explaining it very well, um, but hopefully you get what I mean. So there you go, prompt weights, they work in V4. I've tested them. They're really cool, um, used well, um, but just be aware that they are a bit broken, yeah? So if you start trying to take something out, like we did here, then, it takes out completely. I think actually, because no doesn't work for some things, I think I think you might find that using prompt ways to take things out might work quite well. Um, yeah, and you can you can get some interesting interesting results. Um, you know, I've 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 really enjoyed playing around with prompt ways, and I'm probably going to move more towards prompt ways because you get far finer control, which brings me, I think, yeah, to my final point. Okay, my testing and my experimentation and this makes sense leads me to believe that the bigger your prompt is the more you dilute the elements within the prompt yeah so let's describe an image as say there's a hundred you've got a hundred units <laughs> this is me just making crap up yeah sorry you've got a hundred units of ai stuff to use up within an image yeah if you tell it you want a surrealist landscape, let's say, right, and that's all you tell it, it'll go, right, I'm going to put 100 units into surrealist landscape, and it'll do that, right? But if you say, I want a surrealist landscape, and I want it to be photo real, oh, that's another thing, I'll talk about this in a minute. I want it to be photo realistic, and I want this camera, and I want this lens, and I want this, and I want a 3D blender, and I want it, and I want it, and I want it. It goes, I'll put one unit in there, one unit in there, one unit in there, one unit in there, one. And that may be what you want, yeah, but you're diluting what you want, yeah? So, again, overloading your prompts yeah if you want a man chasing after a car wearing a top hat with a walking stick and a dog trying to bite his ankle in the rain and a storm and then you put like 16 different prompts about photo photography after it it's going to look at that first bit and it's going to go i've only got like 10 units of stuff to to do that and you'll get poorer results yeah that's my experience that's what i'm seeing yeah so find the key words that get the artistic style that you want, so you've got more for your subject, if that makes sense. Um, I've lost my train of thought. I was talking about, you know, I was talking about something. Oh, it'll come back to me. What well, after I stop the video? So there you go. That's what I've learned on prompt weights. All oh, right, that was it possibly. Yeah. So prompt weights you can use to to weight those. Let's call them a hundred units that you've got in the specific way that you want. Yeah. So you can go like, I want a surrealist portrait. And I want like 100 and then all your other little bits and weight them, yeah? So that's probably what I'm going to move towards is, is getting very specific prompt weights that drive exactly what I want to see. Um, there you go. Hope you enjoyed that. Sorry I've been absent. I've got a massive project. It's pretty exciting. There'll be videos on the channel about it at some point. Um, and... Um, I have I have got another another video planned. I've been testing some some really cool artistic terms that I've not tested before that do work. So um, yeah, um, they'll be coming soon. All right, thanks for watching. Bye.